Welcome to Pause on Purpose, and I'm Paul Fredericks. Hey, if uh, you're enjoying these Pause on Purposes, would you do two things? Number one, uh, go down here at the bottom of the screen and push the thumbs up, the like, subscribe button. Those are two things. Um, but a third thing, sorry, three things. Send me an email. My email is Phoenix pastors at gmail.com phoenix pastors at gmail.com let me know how these are working for you give me some feedback what's a topic or subject you'd like us to talk about from a biblical view let's get god's view on something that is bugging you or maybe interest interesting to you give us a call give us a shout out we'd love to hear from you that's phoenix pastors at gmail.com Again, we're finishing up the month of June, and the whole subject of June has been on honesty and integrity, keeping our word. Yesterday, we talked about how to help somebody who's in the restorative process uh, because they've broken their honesty, they've broken their integrity. Today, it's the flip side. How do we prevent ourselves from being duped, from being fooled, especially when in the church world, in, because there are many people, well-meaning people in the church, who come in with flashy trinkets of the world's philosophies, and they come in with great promises, but when you look at the fruit, it's spoiled rotten. For example, recently, there was a large church here in America, North America, where they used a lot of world philosophies, and they grew a very, very large church. And I'm not saying some of the fruit wasn't good. Some of it was very good. But recently, there's been a lot of bad results that have happened. And because of the way that the methods that they used, the, these chickens have come home to roost, if you will. Or the fruit that they've produced leads to spoils. It's a spoiled produce. In fact, at one point, they had to get rid of over several million dollars worth of staff. They had to let them go. That's a lot of staff people because of probably philosophies that were worldly based. So the apostle Paul tells us in Colossians 2, he says, don't let anyone capture you with empty philosophies and high sounding nonsense. Isn't that a great term? High sounding nonsense, right? that come from human thinking and from spiritual powers of this world rather than from Christ. If someone comes in with something that's too good to be true, true, it's probably too good to be true, right? As our dads and our moms used to say, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Someone's picking up the tab. And so if someone comes in with some great promises and saying, oh yeah, uh, 30 churches did this, or 30 ministries did this, and here's what happened. Even though it sounds really good, look for the foundation. What's it built upon? What's it based upon? If Christ is never mentioned, or when asked about the foundation, Christ is never alluded to or mentioned, or scriptures never brought into it, I mean, true scripture. And it, and it sounds like it's in context. It's not taken out of context. If it doesn't have that, ignore it. As Mighty Python said, run away, right? Run away from it. Paul says, don't let anyone allure you to hook you like a fisherman into that empty philosophy. Protect yourself because there are people out there and some of them are well-meaning, but some of them, are purposefully deceptive. And it's up to us to put our thinking caps on and say, God, is this of you or is it of the world? And God will answer us. That's why it's important to wait, not make a hasty decision. Pray and wait. Pray some more and wait. Pray some more and wait until you are convinced that the Spirit of God has given you a green light or a red light. And that's why you have elders. That's why you have leadership for all of us to have that great discernment. So next time you're in a 
position to make a great decision for your church, for your ministry, for your organization, pause and ask God to show you, is this of him or is this of the world? And then go with God. Always go with God because he goes with you.